Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to cardiology lectures. I am Dr. Nick Nickham. I have been a cardiologist for uh, more than 30 years at the Texas Medical Center and today we are going to learn something about uh, postpartum cardiomyopathy. So let us begin. Before we go any further, here is a little disclaimer. This is not a medical advice. It is for educational and informational purposes only. Please consult with your physician for any medical advice. Postpartum cardiomyopathy is a form of a dilated cardiomyopathy that presents with the signs and symptoms similar to heart failure in the last months of pregnancy or within the first five months following the delivery. Mechanism of postpartum cardiomyopathy is not fully understood, but nonetheless it is proposed that cells from the fetus take up residence in the mother and vice versa, which sometimes can provoke an immune response. Serum from patients with uh, peripartum cardiomyopathy have been found to contain autoantibodies in high titers which are not present in the serum of patients uh, with idiopathic uh, cardiomyopathy. 17% of the cases were diagnosed antipartum and 83% postpartum. The mean age at diagnosis was uh, 28 years plus or minus 6 years. Left ventricular function almost completely normalizes in 51% of the surviving patients following postpartum cardiomyopathy. Interestingly, the left ventricular ejection fraction normalizes only in 23% of the African cohorts. Besides the antibodies, what else can cause postpartum cardiomyopathy. Here are some possible causes, namely myocarditis or cardiotropic viral infections. It can also be related to tumorism, apoptosis and inflammation that is death of myocardial cells associated with inflammation and possible other causes. What type of women are at high risk for developing postpartum cardiomyopathy. Multiparity women, women who are 30 years or older, women who have multi-fetal pregnancies, women who manifest with preeclampsia or gestational hypertension or an African American race are some of the high risk candidates for development of uh, postpartum cardiomyopathy. The signs and symptoms of uh, postpartum cardiomyopathy are very similar to those of patients with idiopathic congestive cardiomyopathy and sometimes they, they may also mimic normal symptoms experienced by pregnant women following delivery. The most common symptoms are of course shortness of breath, weakness, leg swelling, tachycardia and palpitations. The findings most often we look for are leg edema, palpable right ventricular impulse, basilar rales, functional murmurs, S3 gallop and cardiac arrhythmias. Here is an example of a chest x-ray showing slight cardiomegaly with evidence of pulmonary congestion. The best test to evaluate for presence of postpartum cardiomyopathy is a two-dimensional echocardiography which can show dilatation of the left ventricle along with dilatation of the left atrium and also the right atrium and the right ventricle. These findings are characteristics of uh, dilated cardiomyopathy and we can also see, we can also measure the rejection fractions which can range anywhere from 15 to 30 to 40 percent. The next question is how do we treat these patients? If you recognize a patient with peripartum cardiomyopathy or if the patient manifests with symptoms which are unexplained by normal pregnancy, it is best to recommend a patient to see a cardiologist. The cardiologist can not only diagnose the presence of uh, congestive cardiomyopathy but also 
appropriately choose the drugs that are safe during pregnancy without compromising either the mother or the unborn baby. Here are some of the drugs which can be safely used in patients who are pregnant during the peripartum period and these medications include digoxin, diuretics such as uh, furosemide, nitrates, hydralazine, heparin and beta blockers. Some other drugs that we should avoid during peripartum period are ACE inhibitors, nitroprusside, amiodarone and warfarin or coumadin. Let us talk about ACE inhibitors. Angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors or ARBs are contraindicated in pregnant patients because they can cause birth defects. The teratogenic effects occur particularly in the second and third trimester with fetopathy characterized by fetal hypotension, oligohydramnios, anuria and renal tubular dysplasia. Another important thing that we need to keep in mind is uh, during pregnancy women have a higher risk of developing thromboembolic complications because of increase in concentrations of uh, coagulation factors such as 2, 7, 8 and 10 along with plasma fibrinogen. The risk may persist for up to 6 weeks postpartum. Patients with evidence of a systemic embolism along with severe left ventricular dysfunction or documented uh, cardiac thrombosis should receive anticoagulation. The question is which anticoagulant do we use in a pregnant patient? If we do use anticoagulation in the, in the peripartum period, they have to be continued until the heart function returns to normal. Warfarin has been around for a long time, but there are certain periods during gestation when warfarin can be safe and there are certain periods during gestation when warfarin can be quite uh, harmful. Let us look at those different periods. Warfarin is probably safe during the first six weeks of gestation, but there is a risk of uh, embryopathy if warfarin is taken between 6 and 12 weeks of gestation. So during the first 6 weeks of pregnancy, warfarin is safe. But beyond the 6 weeks, up to 12 weeks, it can cause some abnormalities in the embryo. Again, warfarin is relatively safe during the second and third trimesters, but must be stopped and switched to heparin several weeks before delivery. Now we can see how the warfarin story is getting more and more complicated. Warfarin can cause spontaneous fetal cerebral hemorrhage in the second and third trimesters. So there is always a risk when we use anticoagulants whether the patient is pregnant or not. Even in general cardiology, we always look at the risk versus the benefit. And here we need to apply the same principle, but we need to be more prudent in using warfarin only when it is safe to use and avoid it if at all possible during periods when it can be harmful to the unborn baby. There are certain drugs which are in the research phase which may be beneficial in patients with uh, congestive heart failure resulting from uh, postpartum cardiomyopathy and some of them are listed here. Pentoxifilin improves symptoms. It improves left ventricular function and outcomes. Intravenous immunoglobulin has been shown to improve the left ventricular ejection fraction, markedly reduce the inflammatory cytokines, immunosuppressive therapy does not have a fully proven role but can be considered in patients with proven myocarditis. Bromocryptine drugs that inhibit prolactin secretion may represent a novel therapy for peripartum cardiomyopathy. Patients who recover normal left ventricular function at rest or with low dose dobutamine can be allowed to taper 
and then discontinue the heart failure treatments in 6 to 12 months after the diagnosis of uh, postpartum cardiomyopathy. Factors predicting normalization of left ventricular function involve a left ventricular end diastolic uh, dimension of 5.5 centimeters or less and if the left ventricular ejection fraction was greater than 30 percent uh, at the time of diagnosis and by the same token the risk of persistent left ventricular dysfunction is seen in patients whose left ventricular ejection fraction is less than 30 percent or those patients who have a left ventricular end diastolic uh, dimension of uh, greater than 5.6 centimeters or those patients who have left ventricular thrombus or African American women who are at uh, increased risk of having ongoing left ventricular dysfunction. Even after full recovery of left ventricular function, subsequent pregnancies carry a risk of relapse of uh, peripartum cardiomyopathy. If the left ventricular function has recovered partially, then perform a dobutamine stress echocardiography. If you see a normal response, the patient can go through pregnancy. If the response is abnormal, then the risk of subsequent pregnancy can be moderate and it should be discouraged. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a brief overview of uh, postpartum cardiomyopathy. I am Dr. Nick Nickham and please, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Thank you.